So we have a new battery to test and this is not sponsored. I bought this off of Amazon for like 700 bucks with my own cash. And what's cool about this battery is it's pretty cheap for what you get and it's the first safety certified and UL listed battery that's under $800. So if this turns out to be a good battery, I think it will make a lot of people happy. And because it's a cheaper battery, it does have cheaper components. And you'll notice that most 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate drop in replacements like this can discharge 100 amps continuous. This one can only discharge 70 amps and it can only charge it 50 amps. So keep that in mind. If you're trying to connect this to a large inverter, you need to find the max continuous discharge rate and figure out what your inverter needs. So you'll have to put multiple batteries into parallel to power larger loads. But what's really cool is that at this price point, not long ago, we had Ruxu and Ruxu did not have low temperature disconnect and it did not have any safety ratings at all. Not only is this safety certified, it has low temperature charging protection. So this is a complete battery system. You don't have to buy anything else. It arrived at 13.19 volts, which is good. And this battery is pretty heavy actually. This battery weighs 29 pounds, so it's almost the same weight as a Battleborn. Before we tear into this battery, we're going to charge it up and do a capacity test just to make sure that those results are good. And today we're going to test out a lithium iron phosphate specific UL listed progressive dynamics charger. So now we have the positive connected to the positive and the negative connected to the negative, and we just need to plug it in. It sounds like it's working. Oh wow, look at that guys, 30 amps going into this battery right now. It works really well. And this battery charger will fill up this battery in less than three hours. If I were using my other lead acid speed charger, usually for the last hour, it drops down to 12 amps and it drives me nuts. This one for lithium iron phosphate does constant current and voltage all the way till the end. So it will push 30 amps until this battery is fully charged. Now the battery is fully charged and I just got an email from Expert Power because I was wondering if you can put these into series connection for a 24 or a 48 volt battery. And it says that it can absolutely do 24 volts, but they do not recommend most people running them in that way. But they're working on a new battery that will be capable of handling a 48 volt system, but it will be released later this year. And they said that there's also a limit to putting them in parallel, which is only 400 amp hours. Now I feel like an idiot because I just bought this this week and they're coming out with the new battery, but that new battery might cost a lot more because you're going to have to upgrade all of those components and whatever else they're upgrading. It's not going to be as cheap as this. So I think this might still be good for 12 volt only systems like RVs and vans. But yeah, I wouldn't connect it in 24 or 48 volt. So the main competition for this one is the Renogy. Anyways, let's continue the test and do a capacity test. This is a typical 300 amp shunt with a capacity monitor and we're gonna hook it up to a heat gun. Actually, let's do a max load test real quick just to see if it can pull 70 amps. And it's pulling 67 amps. Let's run this for a few minutes to make sure it can handle that load. Yeah, the BMS is right here. You feel it warm up every time. And in max load, we pulled nine minutes and five amp hours, so it passed the test. Now we're pulling 20 amps for the capacity test. So we're gonna run this until it dies. So it's been five hours and we're at 99 amp hours. It's almost there. Guys, I'm tired. I've been doing this test way too long. I need to stop doing these tests. Man, it's like one o'clock in the morning and I feel like death. I should not be doing these tests this late at night. This is not smart. So we passed 100 amp hours and the test is almost done. So we have some test results. We have 111 amp hours and 1.41 kilowatt hours. So this battery exceeded its advertised capacity by 11%. This is the best test result for capacity that I've ever had. I really was not expecting this result from this cheap of a battery. That is nuts. Now for the next test, we're going to throw this in the freezer and see if it has low temperature charging protection. So this battery is at 22 degrees Fahrenheit and we're going to try charging it. And right now it's charging, so it should cut off in less than a second. Guys, this battery is frozen. It should not be charging right now. I guess we should open it up and see if it even has temperature sensors. That's ridiculous. It should not be charging right now. I left it in the refrigerator for like three hours. Yeah, guys, this does not have low temp tar charging protection at all. So no one should buy this battery. Do not buy this battery and I just wasted $700. 
Now we have a breathing mask and glasses, so we're gonna cut into this safely. So I damaged the temperature sensor line, so I'm gonna have to fix this and we'll test it manually. But look at these terminal connectors. They're not the right size hole for this terminal. That's not good. So this is frozen salt water and it's at six degrees Fahrenheit and it's still not triggering a low temperature charging protection at all. And that's a really big bummer, you guys. That sucks. Oh, wow. Guys, you won't believe this. And check this out, guys. This is a pretty interesting setup. We have eight cells in series and parallel for a nominal voltage of 12 volts. But yeah, this is well made. Look at how this balance cable is attached. And these are all brand new cells. So they did a good job here. This is a lot of battery for a 100 amp hour cell. I wish it was labeled with the capacity, but it doesn't tell me. Because this pack did pull 110 amp hours, which is really impressive. But man, look how big this battery is, it's huge. So this is probably the highest quality cheap battery that we've ever tested, but it is a huge bummer that it doesn't have low temperature disconnect. But if you have a Victron solar charge controller, you could add a $40 battery sense. You could add your own low temperature charging protection. And this BMS even has two temperature sensors, one on the MOSFET heat sink, then one that goes down to the cells. This one is not taped to the cells, which is unfortunate, but man, six degrees Fahrenheit water should be able to trigger that instantly. It was salt water, by the way. But yeah, such a bummer. Why can't they make that final step? It costs pretty much nothing at this point. You guys already have all the logic control systems. You just need to flash it with something that can take this input and turn off when you have charging. It's, it's so simple. So I just emailed the company to see if this has low temp charging protection. And while I was waiting, I looked up the data sheet and you'll see battery number of sensors one charging. It has 23 degrees Fahrenheit to 149 degrees Fahrenheit protection and the recovery temperatures at 32 degrees. We got that sensor down to six degrees Fahrenheit. And then when I did the initial test before I even cut into it and I damaged the wires, it was below that temperature. So that temperature disconnect should have been working. So the data sheet says that it does. This says that it does, but it does not work. So maybe we have a faulty BMS, but that's a big bummer. I cannot recommend something that does not have that simple feature working perfectly. This thing was in the freezer for a very long time, and usually that will trip any Battleborn or any Lion Energy battery or any other battery on the market. It will trip it instantly. It's very cold, so I don't understand why it didn't trip. Let's put the battery back together again and try one more time. The negative is connected to B negative, and we're gonna add the balance cable. Now we have 12.2 volts at the output. And right now it's charging, so we're gonna add the salt water that is below freezing. And this water is at 15 degrees Fahrenheit, and the cutoff is at 24 degrees. We're at 16. We're still charging. I don't understand it. This is not working. This should work instantly. Now we're charging with 29 amps and 10 amps, and we're gonna see if it will throttle the charging current when it's colder, because maybe it has that in its logic system, but I highly doubt it. It's not getting triggered at all. It is still charging and below freezing. And this is a very simple temperature sensor. The wires look really good. All it does is measures the resistance, and it should instantly trip. This is nuts. There's always the possibility that a temperature sensor is faulty, but they should have been able to check that when they did the quality control of the BMS because it has TPC, so I'm guessing that's for temperature and then some other stuff. But yeah, we verified it multiple times that this does not have charging protection and it says it on the data sheet, so I don't know what to tell you guys. I would not buy this thing. So if you want to build your own battery system where you put these only in parallel or series connect up to 24 volts, and you know how to build a system with low temperature protection, then you can buy this battery. But for everybody else, you should stick with something that's more expensive, that actually has all the features that you want. It's just not worth it to save an extra $100 or $200 when you don't get all the other features. And this is not sponsored. I bought this with my own money. That's why I'm mad right now because I'm gonna have to try to return this and I'm gonna email them and show them a video and pictures of how mad I am because this sucks, it should not do this, it should work. 
So anyways, I hope you guys learned a lot. We have some other batteries coming, which should work. So I will talk to you soon and look forward to those videos. All right, bye.